Okay, I'm gonna squat down here to get in camera. I had my bath for the evening and I've got my Olay night cream on for my skin to help my complexion to look smooth and try to take away some of the wrinkles of my age. And I got my old trusty grungy sweater that my dogs have all snagged up with their nails, but it keeps me warm and cozy. And I promised you guys that I was going to try really hard in the next couple weeks to do a video on how to make your own jar candles. And so let's get started because there's a lot of things and it's going to have to be done in multiple steps. There's a lot of tools and, you know, ingredients and things like that. And so I'm going to compile it all into one video, but this will probably have to be done in several different phases. So let's get started. We're going to start with the jars and the wicks. These are 16 ounce glass jars right here. And I get these from, uh, I think, let me look and I'll tell you who I get this. Nature's Garden in Wellington, Ohio. And they come with these lids. They're metal lids, screw top lids. They're glass jars. And so that's what I'm gonna be making candles out of today. First, we're gonna start with the wicks. The ideal size wicks for 16 ounce jars are CD12s, but I don't have any of those left. So I'm going to be using the CD22, and the CD14 would work as well. These are thicker wicks, as you can see right here. These are the CD22, and these are thicker, the cords, the cotton. And let's see if I can find the CD14. Here's the CD14s, and let me hold it up to the CD22 on camera. These CD14, and these are the CD22s. So the, here's the difference. There's these here, the 22s are a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for those. What we're going to do is, as you can see my hot glue gun here, we're going to hot glue right in the middle of the jar. We're going to hot glue each one of these into the middle of the jar. So here is the wick, CD22, and we are going to put a drop of hot glue on the bottom. Center. And I have clips, wick clips, which look like these, and you can also get them at the same place that we got the wicks and the wax and everything else, the fragrances, they have everything you need there. And so this is what it looks like. Let me get it glued into the bottom, and I'm going to get a skewer just to help me poke these down all the way at the bottom of the jar. And then we've got the wick holder because we want to keep that wick taut and we want to keep it in the middle of the jar. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the rest of these. I've got six out because I'm doing different fragrances today. Okay, what you're going to do with the wick clip, you see this little perforated area right here? When this is glued at the bottom of your glass jar, you're going to wedge it in here in a little perforation. Let's see if I can get it in here so you can see it. Just like that. You're just going to wedge it in there into the little per perforated area that's slit right there. And then this will be glued into the bottom of your jar. Do one more and then I'll put my candle holders, my wick holders, I mean. Let me read to you the type of wax that I got. Um, I have Joy Wax. 
I found that to be the easiest and the best to use for jar candles. And you want to melt your joy wax at 200 degrees. There. And I'm going to be cutting that into smaller chunks so that it doesn't take it forever to melt because you're melting it at a very low temperature. So we're going to use a butcher knife. Let me get these wicks picked up and moved out of the way. So it comes in a big slab like this. But I have a smaller section that was in the bag with it. So I'm going to go ahead and chop that first. It's very easy to cut. It's like butter. I'm going to put them in the pan over here. And I will show you the pan once I get everything in there. We have to do things in steps. I don't have enough counter space. I wish I had a huge island like a professional chef's kitchen, but I don't. You're going to want thermometer, temperature thermometer gun like this because you're going to have to test your wax when it's melted because there's a certain temperature you have to wait for it to get to before you can pour it into your jar. And we also have to color and fragrance it. I love this joy wax. It is so easy to work with. I've tried the wax that you buy like at Michael's and the other Hobby Lobby and other craft stores and it's just, it's terrible. The pellets, I've tried them. Don't buy your wax from craft stores. It's terrible quality. Very expensive, terrible quality. Um, I don't know what you want to call it. A kitchen kettle with a, a gauge on it. I only use that for candle making. I do not use it for food because once you're melting non-food items in something, you of course you know, you guys, that you don't want to use it for food. Very easy, just very light pressure. You're also going to need a scale that you can weigh ounces on because you're going to have to weigh out your fragrance. Around. There we go. Let me zoom out because we don't need it that zoomed in. And it's melting slowly. And we have it set on 200 degrees. Okay, so we want that to turn all melted and then we'll start pouring some in here and weighing it on our scale and we will fragrance that and make a few candles in certain fragrances and then pour some more in there and make them in fragrant, different fragrances. So I'll bring you back when this is melted. Here of my home are basically in pastels or very light grays and I have kind of a light pastelish green kind of on my main living so I'm not using a lot I'm just going to use like a little fraction cut off of these also I wanted to suggest for those of you that are on a very tight budget you can use these to scent and to color your melted wax crimson is one of my favorite uh, wax melts so if you're really tight on a budget and you have the joy wax but you don't have the funds uh, to buy the colorant and then also to buy the, the fragrance oils because fragrance oils are pretty expensive you could use a whole package of these and drop them into your oil in order to color them and to fragrance them as well
X melts pretty cheap at Walmart in those bins that are back by the movies and the electronics. They have them sometimes for 50 cents or 25 cents for each of these packages. That would be when you want to go and spend 10 or 20 dollars picking up those. Maybe. Okay. So I'm going to use, where's the utensil that I was going to use? Right here. I got this at Salvation Army and it's rusted. So I'm going to be using this to scoop it out and to put it in here because it'll be easier to handle to pour it into the jars. After these are melted in here, I'm going to start weighing out my fragrance. Frankincense and mirth, Burmese wood, and charred sandalwood. And you want to use one and a half ounces of fragrance per one pound of wax. So let's turn you this way. Doing right now, I'm weighing out my fragrances. frankincense and myrrh one ounce of the Burmese wood one ounce of the charred sandalwood leaves and acorn and Abercrombie to get these started. We're going to scoop up some more wax. Okay, now we're going to get some more wax out of the kettle. Well, I wanted to show you guys the finished candles. Um, my recorder stopped recording because the battery died. It's a long process to make candles, so here's this, and there's no pooling or rivering. I'm turning it so that you can see all the sides. It smells wonderful. This one's the pine. 
and it's lighter pink with kind of an, uh, an orangey cream on top and these are kind of a perfumey musk smell oh they smell good and then I had enough left over to make a couple tea lights these are pine smell so there's my candles and it made a whole bunch of them I got 12 of these size and I made three of these tea lights. Okay, guys, I hope this inspires you to make your own candles. I'll try to leave some links in the subject uh, box below where <clears throat> you can get the um, joy wax for the jar. And you can also get the jars, the wicks. You can buy everything you need to make candles.